In this part of the chapter, we will be discussing about the relationship between the stress and the strain. There is a stress and a strain curve that we will be understanding about. So effectively, the stress and the strain curve comes from the different bulk modulus that we have. We have a Young's modulus, we have a bulk modulus and we have a pressure modulus as well. So combining all of that, we talk about in the case how exactly the stress and strain curves are related or the stress and strain values are related. We will understand that the stress and strain values have different levels. There is something known as elastic limit, something known as plastic limit and there is a fatigue limit. So let's try to understand about the different consequences of the different points that we plot. So students, we learned about elasticity. Now let's, we also learned about what is a stress, what is a strain. Now we'll go further into the stress strain part 2. We defined something known as a stress. So what was stress? Stress is nothing but the force that is being applied per unit area. Right? So it, that area can be either horizontal, that is either it can the force can be applied perpendicular to the area or tangential to the area. But it has to be applied on a particular area. So let's differentiate it between the different types of stresses. So first let's start off with the tensile stress. So if we talk about the tensile stress, so here let's say this is our cross sectional area that we are referring to. Let me change the color of the pen. Okay, so this is the cross section area that we are referring to and we are applying a force here and in the downward direction. So this way, what is going to be the tensile stress? So tensile stress will define as sigma, which is going to be equals to Ft, which is the force that has been applied on any particular cross section. So mind you, this is here we are not considering both the forces because both the forces are not acting at the same area of cross section. They are acting at different areas of cross section. So we have to take the stress at a particular area of cross section. So it becomes Ft divided by A0. So this you can preferably you don't need to use pounds and all. So it's better that you write down a Newton per meter square. So this is what is known as a tensile stress. Further, if we have to define about the shear stress. So as I mentioned, the previous case was when we talked about the force being applied perpendicular to the area. Now if we would like to say that the force being applied tangential or at a particular angle. So what will we say? Let's say this is my shear stress. So if the force is being applied horizontally or that is tangential to the area, that results into what? So let's, let me put it this way. So I have the object like this. So this is my object yeah, and I apply a force. So let me just do it this way. I apply a force. As a result, what happens? This gets extended. So you are you are sliding it effectively. So if it gets extended, so there is this. So here in this case, if I say theta is here, the original height is here and the extension produced is here. So in this case, we define how much is the extension that has been produced at a particular height, right? Because if you assume that it's a cube point, it's a cube, so obviously all the sides are equal. In that case, we can define in terms of the height or how much is exactly the length. Right? So if we have to anyways define about the shear stress, so shear stress is defined as the tangential force that you see here divided by the same area. Area of cross section remains the same on which area you are applying the force. But mind you, again the force at a particular area of cross section, not all. In general, if you have to talk about, so if I say I have a force that is acting at an angle theta, so in that case we need to find out the two components, that is there is going to be a horizontal component and there is going to be a vertical component. Both the components have to be taken separately. So the vertical component is going to result into the ten tangential a, into a torsion stress and the horizontal one results into a shear stress. So this is what we get.